So today's topic is all things horses. So if you're thinking about moving to Northern Nevada or maybe you already live here and you're trying to figure out anything to do with horses, where you can find horse property, and I have an extra special guest this time on our on our video. It's my daughter, Sydney Lessinger, and Sydney is a new real estate licensee, but Sydney knows more about horse property than even I do. And I have sold lots of horse property over the years. I have sat on a horse six times. <laughs> Most of them because my daughter and my ex-wife were huge horse people. As City is a new real estate agent, we're going to talk about horse property. We deal with a lot of horse property. And for those of you that may not be aware of that, there's actually a lot of different places in Northern Nevada that you can own horse property. What we want to do is talk about some of the things that people need to know about horse property. And first things first, Sydney, give them a little history about your, your horse riding. I got my first horse when I was around seven years old, but I had been riding horses a little bit before that and I've been riding ever since. I've slowed a little bit recently because of college and all that, but I love it, I'm addicted to it. I've been doing it a long time in a lot of different disciplines as well. And of course, because of that, we know a lot of people that deal with horse properties. And so that's how it, you know, I kind of got into helping people buy and sell horse property. And I'm just dangerous enough to kind of know the questions to ask, because again, I don't ever want to ride horses, not really my thing, but we, <laughs> we, you know, our whole point is we're helping people do that. So what kind of areas and locations that people may not be aware of? Because I think they think of Reno as the city mm -hmm. and you don't have to go far in mm -mm. almost any direction. You can find horse property. There's Red Rock Valley, which is north of here. Palomino Valley, which is a little bit northeast of here. There is uh, Gardnerville and Minden and even Washoe Valley, as, oh, you're, Washoe driving, Valley right, yeah. as you're driving through the valley in those mm -hmm. areas. And there's all different kinds of horse properties. So when we talk to people about horse properties and where they might be, what are some of those initial questions? Because again, in Nevada, if you're on an acre or more and you're not in some weird zoning area, typically you can have horses mm -hmm. on your property. And so what would be some of the first things somebody might want to be considering when they're talking about, hey, I'm looking for horse property? I would ask first off what their purpose for owning a horse property would be. If it's kind of a commercial thing, like it's your business, that's a completely different ball game than if it's just, I have three horses and I wanna live on horse property, north or south of here, it doesn't necessarily matter, but kind of what the purpose of their property would be. And so typically then, once they tell you and they say, hey, I'm looking for certain amount of acreage, or I guess a question obviously is how many horses does somebody have, mm -hmm. what would be some things they need to consider on that particular property? They need to consider the functionality and how they kind of want that property to run, where you're going to get your water, how you want your property to kind of be laid out and structured. If you only have three or four horses, it doesn't, you can kind of get away with a little bit more on your property being maybe a little bit smaller than you would have liked, but just kind of how the layout is to make it easy for you to run it. Yeah, it's funny because one of my first questions always is when someone says, I want a big lot. Well, I go, it's all relative. A big lot for someone that's lived in a condo in San Francisco, mm -hmm. a big lot to them is I have a patio that's eight feet deep and I can put a barbecue <laughs> and a chair outside. But for someone who moves here from Montana that was on 500 acres, they think a 12 acre lot for a horse property in Red Rock is like the tiniest little lot ever. So there's just like some questions that you need to ask. And like I said, it's always how many horses. Mm -hmm. The funny part is, is that all these properties are typically very unique. There are no mm -hmm. apples to apples comparisons. Another thing that people need to realize is they're a little more challenging in the fact that they're always on septics pretty much. They're mm -hmm. always on wells. Mm -hmm. They typically need things like generators and it's a lot of equipment you might need. So like mm -hmm. what kind of equipment might someone need on one of these horse properties? You'll see almost everybody with horses have tractors, side-by-sides, four-wheelers, trailers, trucks, just a lot of kind of bigger equipment that you don't really think about. And even then you don't need the biggest tractor or the biggest quad or the biggest trailer, but just things that are functional for your property and what you want to do for your purpose. Right. And so sometimes when these things are getting included in a transaction or a sale, sometimes we have to push them to the side and sell them separately. Mm -hmm. Typically, I know when you start to see most of the places I see that actually have a barn or these metal barn buildings that have anywhere from four to eight stalls, like what kind of things would somebody want in a in, a, in a, some sort of barn structure? Typically, people want a tack room, so they'll convert one of the stalls in their barn, depending on how big it is, into some kind of tack room. So you can put your saddles, your bridles, your blankets, any sort of your horse equipment in there. You'll see a lot of hay storage inside of barns as well. They'll convert another one of those stalls into hay storage if they don't have an outbuilding already built for hay. Some people will build them later, but it just depends on how many horses you have. Right, right. And and again, it's, it's contacts too. Like I mm -hmm. tell people all the time, it's like, if you're new to the area, you're trying to figure mm -hmm. out what it is. So like we get a lot of people move here from California with horses. The weather here in the winter is dramatically different than people that live in California. Mm -hmm. And so, cause I don't know a whole lot about horses, like how big a deal is the fact that we live at higher elevation or that we have snow and it's much colder. Like how does that affect an animal? 
the elevation change for sure, just like any athlete, it changes the way that you breathe. So the elevation is a huge factor in seeing that when you're going to ride your horses, you have to kind of leg them up a little bit more, which basically means get them fitter faster. I, I was going to say what legging them means. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> that you're getting your horses fit for whatever it is that you want to do because there's a lot to do here. Um, you need shoes for your horses. In the wintertime, you don't want to be slick shod, which basically means that your shoes are flat. You want heels and toes, which on the heel of your shoe, it goes, uh, there's a little bit almost cleated. Right. So it gives them a little bit more grip in the snow. Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard you talk about cleated shoes. I don't know what any of that means. I yeah, just we call them heels and toes here. You don't need much more than that. If you're if you're going around, they do make much more studded almost. So, Well, it, people need to understand, like, when you were riding horses, a lot of times this happens in the mm -hmm. winter, and I didn't know. I, I mean, they were out riding horses in 10 degrees and three feet of snow, and mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know that was really a thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, what are, what are some other things that people need to bear? Because, again... Does elevation affect a horse's conditioning just like it would a person? Absolutely, right. it absolutely does. So I grew up fox hunting and we, a month before the season would start, would start training horses and start legging them up because you can't just go into soccer practice without any training or any right. sort of, you know, health benefits or anything like that. <laughs> right, right. You're, you're gonna be really tired and really out of breath. So I think that's a huge factor for sure. And so what are some other things? So like if someone's new to an area, I know with horses, there's a lot of things regarding where am I going to get my hay? And where am I going to get my shoes? Mm -hmm. And what, like, what kind of things that, that people need contacts for? You need vets, first off. Vets are a hugely important thing. You need a farrier, a really good one for sure, because farriers kind of make your horses. Without your horse's feet, you don't really have a horse. You need chiropractic if that's what you're interested in. Some horses need it. Some horses can get away without having it. So actual chiropractic. Why would a horse need chiropractic work? In certain disciplines, horses, they, they get their backs messed up just like we do. And you can actually genuinely chiropract a horse. You can chiropract their legs, their neck, everything. And, and so how does, I say, how does a horse get out of whack? Like what kind of riding are people doing that's causing horses to need chiropractic? Horses can get out of whack waking up in the morning. I mean, horses are almost a little bit fragile. It's, it's an interesting thing. I've seen horses stand up weird in their stall and all of a sudden they're in pain and it so it's happens. like old people. I tell yeah. people, that's how you know you're getting old <laughs> when you go to bed and you feel great. And you wake up and you're like, I hurt my back. I'm like, what'd yeah. you do? I, well, I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. So yeah. horses, same thing. I always joke because yeah. horses are, as a non-horse person, mm -hmm. when you get up close to a horse, mm -hmm. it is a big, majestic, like it's an amazing animal. Yet they're so and, fragile. Oh my God. They're mm -hmm. like, we always joke that they're like the whole, they spend their whole life trying to kill themselves. Yeah, absolutely. They yeah. do. Horses are very, very interesting. <laughs> and, and for a non-horse rider, like I said, I always thought you hop on a horse and it looks much easier than it is. Mm -hmm. But I know as the few times I've sat on a horse and you literally just put me on a lead line and walked me across <laughs> a barn, the bone in the middle of their back, mm -hmm. it's like, it's not for everybody. I'll tell no, you No, it isn't. If you're looking, if people are looking for these type of contacts, they can mm -hmm. obviously reach out to us because obviously we can help people buy and sell. And what I love about what Sydney and I now can do together is I can help figure out what somebody's home is actually worth and how to help mm -hmm. them buy and sell them. But if someone wanted to walk around the property and ask a million questions about like, <laughs> what type of ground that they ride on. Like, is mm -hmm. this a big deal too? Footing is a huge key. A lot of people for a long time, depending on where they live, don't put shoes on their horses. If they are strictly uh, at a jumping barn, they stay in a cushy arena with good footing because you make your arena that way. We in Northern Nevada, a lot of people will fox hunt. They will do endurance races and things like that through the desert because we have so much access to public land here. But that public land is rocky or the footing's right. hard and it makes horses sore. It's just like you walking around with no shoes on. Would you right. want to walk through rocks with no shoes on? No. So with that being said, we can pretty much answer any of your questions and we have contacts for all things horses. So mm -hmm. whether it's trying to figure out vets, farriers, mm -hmm. boarding, where you can ride, what type of riding, all over Northern Nevada. And if we personally don't know, we're probably one phone call away from being able to help get you to the answers to these questions. So depending on if you want one acre or 50 acres or whatever kind of horse properties that people are looking for, by all means, make a comment, reach out to us, Sydney and I can help you get whatever information it is you're looking for and just realize for horse people, it is an amazing place to own a horse. Mm -hmm. It is an amazing place to be able to get out on horses. And again, I didn't want to ride horses, but my daughter's had a horse her whole life. So I know how much horses can cost mm -hmm. and the expense of <laughs> horses and just know, you know, it's not a whole lot different than people that are country club members somewhere else. It's just whatever your favorite sport is. And as we know in Northern Nevada, there's a million outdoor things to do. So if you're liking this kind of content, by all means, hit the subscribe button, follow the channel. And again, if you're looking for anything to do with all things horse property, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to answer those questions. So thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time on another video.